Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to tell you about life casting, either to make solid plaster items, like my hand, or how to make a rubber mask of your own face or another part of your body, like this one that I did earlier. see, life casting is making a mould from a piece of your body, or someone else, and making a cast of it in a solid or flexible medium. The hand I've got here is cast in plaster. It's very important that you don't put plaster directly on your skin to make any sort of cast. This is because plaster gets very, very hot as it sets, up to 60 degrees centigrade, and that's enough to burn you. Also, it sets rock solid, so if you were to submerge your hand in plaster, and let it set, not only will it burn you, but your hand will be stuck in and you won't be able to get it out again. Several people have been known to lose fingers and large amounts of skin trying this. When you choose a moulding compound for life casting, you should check that it says it's skin safe. I'm going to show you how to use alginate. I've got a packet just here. This is 550 grams. This is used by the dentist for doing cast of your mouth if you've ever had a crown fitted. Alginate is made of seaweed, so it's non-toxic and it's also safe to put on your skin. This is a slow set version, the dentists use a faster set version. This one sets in around four minutes, which is still quite fast. It's also chromatic alginate, which changes colour. When you first mix it, it's purple, then it changes to pink when it's ready to do the mould, and when it's set, it changes to white, so you know it's safe to remove your hand without breaking it. This is the process that I followed to cast my hand in plaster. First of all we mix the alginate up as directed. You can mix this between one part water to one part alginate and two parts water to one part alginate to make it more runny. We use just less than one 550 gram pack for this example. This method is quite simple. We just put the alginate into a shallow tray and I press my hand into it. You can see that the alginate changes colour from pink all the way through to white when it's set. That means it's safe to remove your hand from the alginate. Here's a picture of the mould that's left. The next thing to do is simply to cast plaster into the mould. You need to do this quite quickly because alginate will dry out quite quickly and shrink and crack. If you want to do the cast later you need to cover it with a wet towel or somehow keep it sealed. Here's the plaster in the mould. After about an hour to let the plaster go off properly, we turned it over and we slowly peeled off the alginate. You'll find it breaks off in chunks but you should see that you've got quite a clear cast of your hand and quite a lot of detail. You can see in this example that we've got some bubbles in the palm of the hand. This is because air has risen out of the liquid alginate and collected underneath the palm of my hand. There's another method which you can reduce the bubbles, which I'll show you now. In this example we use a non-chromatic alginate that's constantly green throughout the process. The basic idea is that you cover your hand in alginate whilst holding it in the air, smoothing it on all over to get rid of the bubbles. Then we backed up the alginate with some Modrock Plaster of Paris bandages to make a rigid case. Alginate is quite flexible even when it's set, so you can quite easily get your hand out. You need to wiggle your fingers slowly and slowly pull your hand out so you don't tear it. This gives us a one-piece enclosed mould. To make sure we didn't get any bubbles in the plaster cast, we put in a small amount of plaster and rotated it all around, then filled up the rest. As you can see, once we broke away the modrock and the alginate, the cast is much better. There are a few small bubbles that seem to have occurred in the plaster stage, but on the whole the cast is much better than the first example. In the next example, I'm going to show you how I made this quite weird mask of half my face out of latex. If you watched my previous video on making latex items, you know I've told you that the best sort of mould for latex is plaster. That's because plaster is slightly porous and it draws the moisture out of the latex helping it dry and so a skin forms on the inside of the mould that you can peel out and that makes the finished item. However, I've also told you that putting plaster directly on your skin is very dangerous and you must never do it. Unfortunately, alginate is full of water so latex doesn't dry very well and the alginate won't pull the moisture out of the latex in the same way that plaster will. If you try and mould latex inside an alginate mould, you'll probably end up with one big wet mess. So in order to make a safe mould for your skin out of alginate and then cast latex in it, there's a bit of an extra stage in the middle. Traditionally this involves melting wax into the alginate to make a wax cast, then breaking away the alginate and then using the wax cast to make a plaster mould from. 
problem with this is that you basically have to heat up wax in an oven somewhere and walk around with a bowl of molten wax to pour into alginate. Once you've made the plaster cast, the only way to get the wax out is then to melt it out again in the oven. So this is quite messy and dangerous. There's a much safer way to do this without melting wax or doing anything dangerous. And I'm going to show you how I did it. This technique is called a clay press. First of all, I made an impression in alginate of half my face. I did this in the same way we did the hand, just by putting my face into a shallow bowl of alginate. There are other better ways to do this possibly, by having an assistant spread it on your face, but remember that you need to put straws up your nose or in your mouth or something, so that you can carry on breathing while the moulding process is taking place. To make this example easy, I just put half my face into the alginate so I could still breathe through the other side of my mouth during the process. The next thing is to perform the clay press. It simply involves pressing a very soft clay into the alginate to make an impression. We use wet clay, which is a very soft water-based clay. It's often used in movie prop sculpting. We push clay into all of the details all over the surface of the mould, starting with small pieces of clay and working our way up until it was all covered. Then we back this with plaster to give it a rigid base. After about half an hour when the plaster had gone off properly, we flipped it over and we broke away the alginate. This came away quite easily and left a piece of clay which was exactly the same shape as my face. As you can see there are some bubbles and there are a few creases and things where the clay didn't get pushed in properly, but because this is made of clay you can re-sculpt it and fix any problems with it. If you wanted to make a character out of this sculpt as well, being clay you could sculpt the details in. So if you wanted to make a zombie or something else like that, you could sculpt in details of rotten flesh etc. This obviously gives us a clay sculpt which is exactly the same as my face. This is suitable for making the plaster mould from, and means we don't put plaster directly on our skin. Before I made the plaster mould, I sealed this with some spray paint. I used a product called Plasti Dip, but you could use any other rattle can or anything really. Just make sure the clay is not too wet so it sticks properly. The clay of course will eventually dry out, and you want to make the mould before it does, otherwise it will shrink and crack. After we'd sealed the clay sculpt, we made a plaster mould from it. This would eventually be used to cast the latex piece. We let the plaster set for an hour or so to make sure it had gone off properly. Then we flipped it over, took out the plaster backing, and the clay came out quite easily because it had been sealed before we put the plaster on. Some details got stuck, like the ears, but they were easy to clean out. That left us with a plaster mould that we can do the latex cast from. We let the plaster dry out till it was completely dry, which took about 24 hours. Then we were able to dwell the latex in it as I described in the latex making video. Here's the plaster full of latex. We left it there for about two hours before pouring the excess out, and then we left it overnight to dry. This left us with a skin of latex inside the mould that we could peel out, and that made the finished mask. Next time I'm going to tell you how to paint latex and finish the item off using a variety of methods. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye!